Hi there, everyone. I am Lauren Jackson, an APQS sales representative and educator. And today I'd like to talk to you a bit today about common tension problems on your long arm quilting machine. So this is not necessarily APQS specific, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna correct those tension problems with my APQS Millie today. Tension issues are something that everybody has. So it's important that when you see them, you know what to do to take care of them. I just want you to remember that as you're watching this tutorial, that tension problems are kind of like a math equation. It's an if this, then that, and we have to troubleshoot and figure out what the best way to proceed is and then move forward. There is no black and white version of this. And if you find yourself getting in trouble because you've done too much or too little changing of the tension on either one of the devices on your machine, then I'll show you where to go to kind of get to a neutral place where you can take a deep breath and start again. So let's take a look at what we've got going on with our tension today. The goal to pr is to practice for proper tension. When you're practicing and trying to figure out what proper tension looks like, I recommend you get a different bobbin color and top thread color so that you can really assess which one's which. You're gonna wanna practice with your tension until you can see that you can do multiple designs in various ways and not see one color or the other poking through. With your long arm quilting machine, there are two areas where you're going to adjust your tension. Your top tension dial up here in your top thread path or the large screw on your bobbin area. When you're adjusting for tension, if you wanna tighten your top tension dial, you're going to imagine that that's the face of a clock and you're going to adjust by 30 minutes to an hour or more each time you rotate it. Half turn, full turn, because I'm going from 12 to six, okay? When I tighten it away from me at the needle side, or if I'm looking at it on the side, it's righty tighty, lefty loosey, and it's the same with your bobbin screw. When I'm adjusting my bobbin screw, I will not adjust this in large increments, not 30 minutes at a time. Instead, I'm going to move that screw by five minutes at a time. So from the one o'clock position to the two o'clock position. And then I'll go ahead and try my tension again. If I need to loosen it, I'll go from two to one, try it again and take a look at it and see what it looks like. Now, if you get mega stuck and you've adjusted this a bunch, and you've adjusted your screw a bunch, let's talk about what our factory normals are. So I can speak well to my ABQS machine because that's a machine I know and love. If I loosen this bolt and get it so that it is flush with the screw in here, if I tighten it a lot, I know you probably think I'm crazy, you can see this screw peg. If I loosen it until it is even and flush with that, that is just, that's your, your factory normal. So if you can brush your finger across it and it feels flat, you are kind of resetting it, okay? And then as far as your bobbin case is concerned, your factory, not necessarily factory normal, but a good starting point is when you can shake the bobbin and it jiggles by four to six inches. So right now I'm holding it and it's just falling out of my hand. So I'm going to tighten it just a bit. When we are setting tension on our long arm quilting machines, we want to get our bobbin situated first. So I went ahead and tightened it. Now I've tightened it too much because it's not dropping or dangling at all. Not even when I shake it. So this is too tight. So we'll loosen it just a little bit. We'll go back five minutes. When I hold it, it doesn't fall. When I shake it, it might drop a quarter of an inch. So that is still too tight. We want it to drop four to six inches, just as a starting point. Oops. Okay, so from, I think I went from two to 12. Okay, and that's where we were to begin with. So let's, you can see how volatile that is. I barely moved it. Okay, so this is where we're good. I shake it and it drops four to six inches, okay? Another way I like to test it is if it's on the fat pads of my fingers. If I pull and it doesn't fall off, then the tension is good too. So tension becomes something that you begin to feel uh, and you begin to learn the feel of it and it becomes a very simple process, but it can be a frustrating process until you figure that out. So keep in mind if you're adjusting the top, you're adjusting it in 30 minute to an hour increments or more. 
if you are adjusting your bobbin, you're adjusting it by five minutes at a time. So you'll go from the number one to the number two on the clock. Now that I've got a good feel for my bobbin, I want to get a good feel for my top thread. So when you pull on the thread from your top, you want to pull kind of behind the needle and away. This will allow you to get a good feel for what your tension is coming from the top. I can see already that my tension is really tight because it didn't feel particularly ornery to pull your threads through the needle. So we want to pull it. out and away and that's too tight and again I'm doing this by feel and I want you to get used to doing this by feel because it will make tension so much easier so I made it just a little looser so now I want to check my tension let's see if my tension is good for my machine I'm using a 40 weight in the bobbin it's an aluminum bobbin with a um, spring in the case it's not a magnetic bobbin and I'm using a 60 weight top thread. When you practice your tension, I want you to practice going back and forth, bottom to top, going back and forth, side to side, going back and forth on the diagonal, going around in circles. Now I check my tension again if I go from what I'm at in stitch regulated mode to manual mode because that might affect how good my tension looks. I often will stitch in manual if I am um, doing fillers and I don't want to have a bunch of eyelashing because my tension is different in manual mode. So let's take a look at what this tension looks like on the designs we just stitched. Now, it's probably difficult to see. I've gotten really good at adjusting my tension, no matter if I'm using a 40 or 60 weight, but because we've done it in this kind of pattern, this direction, I can see that going away from me, I can see those red stitches coming towards me. My machine does better, okay? And going away from me, my machine um, does worse. So as I'm looking around these circles, it was either coming the down and around, well that was the only way, down and around, I can see a little bit more of the red dots kind of poking through. They are not quite at the top of my, um, of my quilt sandwich, they're kind of just in the hole. So they're kind of in that batting space, that, uh, that batting loft, that puffy area of the batting in between the two layers of the quilt sandwich. So it's not technically bad tension, but as a custom quilter myself, that's not the tension that I'm looking for. Uh, when I'm working on any project. Tension is a fickle beast. It is one of those things where we're essentially playing a tug of war, okay? One side is winning. As your two threads are pulling on one another, one side is going to win. If it's pulling it up to the quilt top section, then you know that the quilt, either the quilt top thread is winning and it's too tight, or your bobbin thread is losing and it's too loose. If it's pulling your thread to the bottom of the quilt sandwich, right, then your bobbin thread is either winning and is too tight or your top thread is losing and it's too loose. Either way, it's an if this, then that comparison. If my, if when I set my tension, okay, we, cause we set our bobbin tension first and we set that doing the drop test and I'll show you that here in a minute. If when I set my bobbin tension, it was good then it's got to be my top thread that is problematic and I will check that, okay? Tension becomes something that is very much a feel. You have to feel how taut those threads need to be coming out of either the bobbin case or coming through the needle past, um, past the hopping foot and you've got to pull on those threads just to get a sense for it. The more you do this, the more you're going to understand how much tension your 60 weight threads can take, your 40 weight threads can take, and oftentimes the thickness of your thread will impact uh, just how well it's coming and going <laughs> around the hook assembly area, okay? So that'll play a factor in it as well. But it is important that as you're adjusting your tension, you consider what side, one, what side is the thread coming through to, two, what is most likely my culprit? Was my bobbin too loose when I put it in the first time? Did it feel like it was jiggling or falling too fast? Or did my top thread feel kind of tight as I was pulling it through the needle? I could hear it 
pulling and stretching as I'm pulling it through. Maybe I should have loosened that first. So because when you're setting your tension, you set your bobbin tension first, it's important that you get a good feel for what that bobbin tension should feel like. This way you will minimize the back and forth of adjusting your top tension and your bottom tension to get those threads to pull evenly. Most common tension problems that you'll have are simple, usually to take care of, but sometimes they can be a little unruly. So let's take a look at what common tension problems are. You have something that's commonly referred to as eyelashing. When you see eyelashing like you see here, you'll know that because that tension and eyelashes, they look like little eyelashes on the side of the whole strand of designs that you're making, you'll know that when you see them across the entire thing, that is generally a problem that you have because your tensions are not quite matching up. So how do we assess how to fix eyelashing? In general, if I see any kind of tension problem on the top, I can do one of two things. I can adjust my top thread or my bobbin thread. I'm tightening my top thread a lot, so hopefully I can show you worse tension. Those red dots are starting to poke up. Now I'm starting to get a little bit of eyelashing. And eventually, it's gonna get so bad, my thread's gonna break because it is just too tight. See how tight that post is? It is definitely not at the factory standard or even a good place really to start with my tension. That, I mean, I had to take a lot of clicks to sandwich that that tightly. So the goal was to get my thread to start pulling up to the top. These are considered eyelashes. Essentially, my bobbin thread, is, or my top thread, is this gray one here, okay? And it is pulling all of my red threads up. See, you can see all of those red threads here. And so that eyelashing is occurring because my top thread is pulling too hard on my bobbin thread, and so the eyelashing is happening on the top of my quilt. Eyelashing is pretty common to happen on the top or the back of the quilt, but you have to identify which one of these is pulling too, too much. So we set my bobbin tension initially, and it should be pretty good to go. So because it felt right when I set my bobbin tension, my first indicator is that my top thread is just too tight, so I'm gonna try loosening that first. Now I purposefully went ahead and um, tightened my bobbin tension, or my top tension way too tight because I wanted to illustrate those eyelashes. So now we'll practice loosening it up and seeing how big of a difference that makes. So I went ahead and I loosened this up. By gosh, nearly what, 10 half turns? So five full turns. So let's see what it looks like now. I still have a good bit of the red kind of showing in the holes and I can see it especially here on the side being pulled up and up above the top layer of the quilt fabric. So I'm going to loosen that just a little bit more and now my, um, my top tension screw is flush with the screw post, the little nut head. So I am adjusting this looser, right? Righty tidy, lefty loosey, so I'm adjusting it towards me. Now we're gonna see how much better this stitches out. So this second line in here, which looks a whole different color in the camera, has that lead gray color to it. So it's a kind of a dark gray. And then the red is the bobbin color. So you can see we've got much better tension on the inside line than we do on the outside line. And I chose, again, I chose to adjust the top thread tension spring as opposed to the bottom bobbin case tension spring and that's because my bobbin case felt pretty good when I was adjusting my tension and the top thread was pulling way too tight so I knew it was a safe bet to pull up my top thread. 
Now, had I adjusted my bobbin tension and it was kind of light, it was falling pretty fast, that's how I would have known that my top thread tension was fine, but it was pulling on my bobbin tension, which was too loose, and so I would have adjusted my, my bobbin to be a little bit tighter to pull those red threads back and underneath the quilt sandwich. Another common tension problem that you can have is something called railroading or flatlining. Uh, these are common terms to describe the exact same thing, but they again mean the same thing. So uh, what happens is that usually on either your top or your bottom of your quilt sandwich, generally it's on the bottom, right? One of your threads will be laying flat across your, uh, your quilt fabric, and then your other thread will be just kind of along for the ride. It's just sitting across. So it actually looks like a railroad track and railroad ties, right? When you, if you looked at it in like a drawing or something. Um, so that's what it would look like. So when we associate railroading or flatlining, it often looks like this. One thread is more dominant than the other and it just kind of takes the other one along for the ride. So what do we do to fix that? This right here is what it looks like when it's railroading. Okay, the top thread is sitting on top. It is not going into the holes, okay? And so that's when you know that that thread that looks like this, whether it's on the top of your quilt sandwich or the bottom, that, that one that's sitting on top of the quilt sandwich, that one is, um, it's winning. So we wanna make sure to either loosen that or tighten the other one. The final thing that I wanna share with you all today that is honestly the weirdest thing and is very uncommon. Um, when I am quilting, I find that I will have tiny loops that randomly happen. It's just a big loop of thread randomly here and there. Almost like my thread kind of whipped up and out of place and it just gave me a little extra, you know, quarter of an inch loop that's just kind of dangling there either on the top or on the bottom. Two things will impact those weird intermittent tension issues that you can have that just kind of look like they're popping up out of nowhere. One, check your thread path and potentially get a thread net on top of your cone of thread to ensure that it isn't whipping off really fast with your directional changes and just kind of coming out of the needle or, or the eye hole too quickly that your bobbin can't get a nice tight tension with it. The other thing that is super uncommon but is almost always my culprit is my bobbin case. We do a lot to take care of our machines. We clean in the hook area, we check the thread path, we dust our machine, we dust our rails. We do all the things that we can to keep lint out of the equation when we're quilting because lint just messes everything up. Um, so why don't we clean out our bobbin cases as often as we clean everything else? I may not be speaking to all of you, but I know I'm speaking to a majority of you. That's just not something you think of, lint getting stuck in the bobbin case. So if you check out your bobbin case, Okay, you've got this wonderful large screw that goes over into a little tension arm, which is where your thread clicks and, sti and sticks in there to, to be pulled out from the, with the hook. So that way um, it has proper tension, proper tautness as it's getting pulled away, it doesn't overspin. Well, this hook, this little spring here, okay, it can get lint in it. And so what I recommend doing is taking a business card of some kind and pushing it down so that it goes past the spring on that bobbin. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna see a nice little ball of lint pop out of there. And the little ball of lint that gets stuck in there really just prevents your bobbin thread from getting the proper tension that it needs as you're quilting because just like this business card, it is pushing the spring up and out and not allowing it to press properly on your thread. And so I usually just push it in as close as I can to the little screw hole, put it out, and then I actually will run it through until I've gone all the way through the bobbin spring and it comes out of place, okay? And you'll notice that it kind of, hopefully y'all can see that, it kind of sits up and out of the way. And so you just gotta like pop that sucker back in so that it is nice and flat again and can put proper tension on, um, on your bobbin thread. This isn't something where I would worry about undoing that entire screw. A uh, business card should take you as far as you need to go to get through here and get the little lint out. Um, so be sure to just give it a try, check it out, and then leave a comment below and let me know if you found lint in there because it is really common. I primarily stitch with polyester threads and so I don't have a lot of undo lint that happens in my bobbin area or anywhere else, but you get lint from the dust in the air that lands on your 
polyester thread or um, from your quilt fabric, from your batting, um, from all kinds of other factors in the room besides having just a cotton thread. Um, so even if you're not using cotton thread, do check your bobbin case for lint balls every once in a while just to make sure that you don't run into the intermittent thread loop monster problem where you're pulling your hair out and can't quite figure out what that tension problem is. Thank you guys so much for joining me while we talk about tension and just the different ways that we can change and, and impact the role that uh, our tension disc can play in affecting our tension and also the speed with which that we are driving the machine. And so I hope that this is helpful for you and you'll take some time and you'll practice and see how much better you're stitching or how much better your stitches look now that you're able to kind of dig deeper and and uh, dive into those tension issues. Please hit the like and subscribe button above if you haven't already. We want to make sure that you get the newest videos as they are out for, uh, for you guys to view. Don't forget to check out as well our next installment coming about other factors that can impact your tension. With your quilt sandwich on your frame or even with a sit down quilting machine, you'd be shocked at how many variables can really play a big role in how easy it is for you to set your attention when you're working on your machine. Take care y'all and have a wonderful day. Happy quilting!